Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Jay. I want to welcome all of you. Uh, thanks for coming for this afternoon. Um, just one announcement before we start. Uh, there is a, a fellowship time after the, this program up at the fellowship hall. We prepared a, a refreshment, so hope you come up and enjoy the fellowship together. Uh, are you ready for this program? All right, let us start.
In the beginning, after God created the heavens and the earth, light and dark, water and land, plants and animals, God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, all the wild animals, and all the creatures that creep upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. In the wonders of creation, the Lord revealed his great love by creating us in his own image and likeness. But by the sin of Adam and Eve, that image was disfigured and the likeness dimmed. All of their people, all of their children would be marked by their transgressions. The goodness of creation was left wanting to be found. The beauty of humanity was hidden behind their sin. However, it was not to remain forever because the Father so loved the world that he gave his own son to be its savior. Even when Adam and Eve were banished from the garden, the Lord was preparing the world to receive the gift of his son. This is the mystery of Advent, preparing for his coming. This is a mystery of the incarnation, preparing for Christ to make all things new. <coughs>
Let us pray. Teach us to wait with anticipation for the renewal of creation in your perfect timing. May we seek forgiveness for sins which darken God's image within. Help us to rejoice daily in the mystery of Christ's presence in the world, even when it seems hidden. Through Christ we pray. When Abram was 90 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God the Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer will your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. As God promised, Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, and Abraham named him Isaac. Sometimes we wait what seems like ages for God's promises to be fulfilled. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born, but God keeps promises even as Jesus fulfilled the promises of the Old Testament prophecies. Let us pray. O King of the universe, in Isaac you revealed yourself to Abraham and Sarah as a promise keeper. Through their descendants, you brought the hope of salvation. In the fullness of time, you spoke your word of promise again in Jesus Christ. May the people you chose long ago to full redemption come to full redemption, and may your children, born not of flesh, but by adoption in water and the Holy Spirit, come to share in all you have promised. Through Christ we pray.
But you, O Bethlehem of Ephra, who are one of the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from being a shepherd to being the ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies and made your name great. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. Ever moving in history toward the fulfillment of his promises, God spoke through the prophets to his servant David. Micah foreshadows the Messiah's arrival from the least of the tribes of Israel. From humble beginnings, the world would be transformed in Jesus. Let us pray. Give us eyes to see where you are at work, O God. May we, by faith, be instruments of your promise keeping to bring your kingdom on earth. Through Christ we pray. In the days of King Herod, there lived a priest called Zechariah who belonged to the Abijah section of the priesthood. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, as Elizabeth was barren, and she was getting on in years. Now when he was exercising his priestly office before God, as was custom, he entered the sanctuary of the Lord and offered incense. At this time, the whole assembly of people outside were praying. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord, Gabriel, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and the power of Elijah, he will go before him to reconcile fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Jordan's bank, the Baptist. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Gabriel said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Mary was perplexed and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. We faithfully pray for God to speak to us and lead us, yet we are shocked when we see our prayers answered and promises kept. God never gives up on us, and we must never cease to pray and trust God to answer. God will always use willing vessels to further the work of the kingdom. Let us pray. Loving God and Father, whether aging like Abraham or a teenager like Mary, or anywhere in between. Make us willing vessels to hear and do your will. Time and time again, you bring fruit out of human barrenness. With the words of angels, you communicated to the chosen people of the covenant. And now that word became flesh and dwelt among us. Teach us love and service in that word. Through Christ we pray.
In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. As soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary and Elizabeth were simple living people. They had no big box stores, no cell phones, no restaurants or internet. Yet they had what is most important, faith that God would keep the promises made to his people. Do we have the faith to trust that Christ will come again to bring God's kingdom on earth? Let us pray. Lord of life, give us the faith of Mary and her descendants. May Mary's own song of praise echo in every moment of our life. Open our hearts to receive the Christ child again and wait with joy for his return. Through Christ we pray. Amen.
Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her fiancé, being a righteous man, had unwillingly to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. From walking in the garden with Adam to the burning bush, clouds, prophets, angels, and even dreams, God has continually spoken to his people. Despite what was most likely social disgrace for Mary, Joseph heeded the herald in his dream and stood by Mary as they brought Jesus into the world together. Joseph's faithfulness fulfilled the prophecy of a savior from the root of Jesse being born in humble Bethlehem. Let us pray. Help us, O oh God, to be faithful, even if the world judges us negatively. Let us seek the kingdom as citizens who are in the world, but not of the world. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house in the family of David. 
He went with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. There was no place for them in the inn. In this season of preparation, let us not become so scheduled in stress that we neglect to make room in our hearts and lives for the Christ child to abide and thrive. Let us always be ready and looking up to the clouds for Christ to return with a shout, ushering in the kingdom forever. Let us pray. Help us to live a life of faith each and every day. May we always be open to the many ways you speak to us. Let us always have room for Jesus. Go out in peace to joyfully serve our Lord and Savior until he comes again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. i 